Uh, what happened to Kalento? What? Did Kalento... Didn't, didn't Kalento win? I think... Oh, yeah, Kalento is actually second over Hive. Yeah, Kalento is still second over Hive. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> like, second, minute, second or third. I th yeah, you're right. Kalento <laughs> won the game earlier, so I think maybe Hive is... If the tiebreaker from Hive increased, then he's above Kalento. But then Kalento is third and Kaldi is fifth on the bubble of the playoffs, which he can't get into now. But he might actually get knocked out of the tournament and not re-invited for second season. Yeah, right. So that's it. I believe Trump is the only player that can somehow like contest either Kalento or Hyped at this point. Yeah, that's Hyped. pretty much what it comes down yep. to. Yeah. Trump needs to win one more game than Hyped to make it even. So Trump has to go three one two can be considered in the in the race in right? top three. Yeah. yeah. But at the very least, he's got a good chance of staying in the league for season two. Uh, even if you don't make it to top three to the playoffs, it's still no issue. At least you get the visibility uh, of season two, which is always nice and a chance to get into the top three of that specific season. So Trump is going to be going up against RDU. Next up, I know RDU's position at the moment is three to five. So if he wins this, he's going to be four or five. Even if he wins this, though, there's no way he goes into the top five. All the people in the top five of Group Horde have at least five wins, which means RDU's chance to be in the top five are null. Yeah, a little unfortunate, I have to say. Yeah. Well, that's a little bit unfortunate for him. But, I mean, going to this day, I don't think he had very much hope of getting to the top five. Like, even just going into it, because he would it would have meant that everyone else just had completely horrible matches, and he somehow got yeah. the perfect streak. But well, you have to think that there are 10 players in each group, right? And five players stay in the tournament, five players don't. So, typically, you probably want to have a positive record, like a 5 4 record, to stay in the tournament, right? Yeah. Whereas a 4 5 almost always gets you out of the um, league, yeah. Well, pretty much systematically out of the league, like it depends on your last match. That, like, generally speaking, is the last match. Like, 5 4 versus your potential 4 5 will make the cut depending on your tiebreaker. Uh, if you get the 5 4, you'll be up there, but definitely not happening. Now, I wonder if Dog has a chance to get in here. <laughs> get in here! I don't think he does, actually. His tiebreaker is very low. Even if he gets a win over uh, Orin to the very end, I think he's lower than Caldi at this point and will not be able to get into the match. No. Even if he he'd have to go 3-0 and Trump would have to go 0-3, right? No, it wouldn't matter at all either way. Yeah. Oh well, well we're just gonna be moving on to RD versus Trump. Now we don't have the lineups of both players. Trump has been really strong as a player in tournaments. I feel like it, I've, I've talked to you about that a bit, Monk, in the previous cast. I think his play has improved drastically since. Uh, he took tournament play a lot more seriously. Something he didn't for a while, at the very least. So, it's kind of nice to see him yeah. compete at this level. I mean, previously he was mainly playing Arena, whereas these days, if you watch his stream, he almost exclusively plays uh, Constructed. Yep. I uh, mean, it's a nice option. We actually do have the lineups for both players right now. It's going to be RDU playing Hunter, Warlock, and Warrior, and Trump bringing Druid, Mage, and Warrior. RDU's Hunter. All right. So, we're getting word from the admins that if Trump wins this, then Kalento is out of the tournament. Oh, man. This is such a tight spot. Out of the top three, I think. Not the tournament itself. Or, yeah, out of the top three and okay. out of the playoffs, which is essentially the tour the rest of the tournament. Yeah, right? and Trump could get the second place if his, uh, if his tiebreaker is big enough. He could get second place and the hype stays third. But Kalento would get knocked out. That is okay. pretty crazy. Uh, again, we're getting word from the admins that Life Coach and Hyped are already in the playoffs. Their All right. Guaranteed. As I initially thought. Yeah. And um, and it's all going to be about if if Trump can win this game. Yeah. Basically, also, Kalento is probably watching this match as well because because he's saying, okay, my fate is all, not in my hands now. I have to maybe bribe RDU to try to win this match. Yeah, because he like RDU might not want to win the match. Like, he's like, oh, you know what? I can't get into the top five anyway. So maybe if Kalento gets a good bribe, um, then RDU will try to take the match at all costs over Trump. <laughs> yeah. It really depends on, like, is RDU really that good friends with Kalento? Yeah, it, that that's all we have to know. So I don't think they can tie either way, right? Both players cannot get the same score. Uh, yeah, because... Uh, the reason why they can get the same score, yeah. but because Trump beat Kalento in the head-to-head -head matchup, if they get the same score and tie, that means Trump will win in the head-to-head -head and he'll advance to third place to the playoffs. All right, so RDU's lineup is, uh, as you mentioned, Hunter, Warlock, Warrior. He's going to start with his Warlock and Trump is going to pick the Warrior right away. If this is a Zoo deck, uh, I think 
it's gotten better. Does Trump bring grim patron? Or does Trump bring control? Um, I have to say, like Amaz, Trump is not really a grim patron player. Like, he has played Miracle Rogue before, yeah. but I don't feel like he's the kind of like combo deck player. He's more of his personality as the mayor of Value Town. He's very much a control player. That's why his favorite classes in Constructed are pretty much Paladin and Warrior. So playing like decks that can control and give you many options, yet still can get tempo plays that swing the game in your favor at some point. Um, which makes a lot of sense. I think it fits in with the character. It's kind of interesting to look at all the, um, I guess, the the landscape of personalities in Hearthstone and how they have favored playstyles that you can associate with them very, very easily. Yeah, very true. It's um, probably also very just comfortable playing Control Warrior. There's a lot of games just being done with Control Warrior. He doesn't have as much experience with the Green Patron Warrior, yeah. I don't think. It's a yeah. bit... Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty new deck anyway, and it's mm -hmm. very difficult to pilot because a little bit like Freeze Mage, you're not playing the cards in your hand. Sometimes you're playing what's in your deck. Um, yeah, exactly. You're not playing you at all to. what you've got right here because nothing is done. You have to kind of anticipate what you're going to draw in the next few turns and just play it into your very next turn or perhaps even two turns ahead. Yeah, but that's that's the playstyle. I like that playstyle, but it doesn't lend itself necessarily super well to trying it out in a new tournament system. So, All right. <laughs> wow, what what is... Uh, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what is this? I'm, I'm 12 and what is this on RDU's face? I think that's a scouter. <laughs> <laughs> what is RDU's power, power level? Over 9,000. Oh, God. What, you mean, what is Trump's power level, right? Right. I, I, yep. is, it, is it over 9,000? I think the cost of his deck is over 9,000 dust, but I don't know about the rest. You How can what? we evaluate uh, what? You know, actually, this is these are just his glasses with the monitor and his screen. Oh, man. So, oh, yeah. He's got wow, his deck list. See, <laughs> man, we can see, we can see Trump's... Uh, this is just like the painting, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. There's a reflection there in Artie's glasses. It, what is this? That's a gunner, so it's reflecting in different. Yeah. Okay. But wow. Uh... That is kind of weird. <laughs> All right. Well, that being said, let's get let's try to focus on the game here, so I don't lose uh I lose track of what's happening. RDU's hand as a zoo is actually really incredible. Dr. Boom might not be the most amazing card in the early game, but it's going to be an amazing transition sometime in the late game. Yeah, pretty much uh, RDU has oh the perfect God. group here. Yeah, this yep. is godlike. Especially well, with that 3 drop top deck. But Trump does have the fiery win axe, so... Still going to be good. The funny thing here is, actually this flame imp will actually sur probably survive, because... Yes. This fireworks will be able to kill the Voidwalker and then the Dire Wolf Alpha, but the uh, Flame Imp is going to get at least 7 damage in. Well, I guess he might armor up Shield Slam on yeah, the following exactly. turn, right? Exactly. This should be a decent Imp. It's only 4 damage, though, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see a Drain Life from Trump here? A drain life. Oh wow! I never looked at it that way. You confuse me, monk. Well played. Isn't that what everyone says, though? I've never heard that, but that's Shut definitely up. the best way to look at it. Wow. I've never heard it either. It's perfect. It's the perfect analogy. Well, RDU does have the imp gang boss, and there is no death bite in Trump's hand at the moment. And in fact, he's got no real play. Uh, that, well, that that could help, that but implosion could, help. could feed into that a little bit. If it hits like average or like sixty six percent chance to kill the acolyte outright, mm -hmm. it's always chance that it's low though. <laughs> if it does, I think our use <laughs> salt is going to pour through the screen. In waves of anguish. Nope. Good damage. Nope. The average has been hit, and Trump still hasn't found. Oh, never mind. That will be useful sometime soon. Yeah, we, we have seen players actually throw two brawls into Warrior these days just yeah. for the Zoo matchup. I agree wholeheartedly with that approach. I think Zoo has become, it's always been a weak spot for Warrior, but now it's more relevant than it's ever been. RDU cannot overextend here. There is no way. It's so risky. But you don't have any other plays, though. Yeah. So I think you he is going to overextend. 
because the brawl is going to be amazing. At least he's going to be able to cycle this mm -hmm. for the time being. Unfortunately for him, he, the neither one of you nice. So, or is that not, is that unfortunate or fortunate? It's more chance of one one coming out live out of a brawl, right? Yeah, less <laughs> imps are likely to come out. Well, Trump probably has to brawl unless he goes for. No, I can't see much of anything else. I mean, Emperor doesn't feel like a play. Shield Maiden could be decent, but you're getting hard countered by something like a... Powerwhelming. Powerwhelming that just wrecks it, and then mm -hmm. you get punished. Well, we'll have to see what Trump decides to do. I think the imps make him hesitate, because they're not really that valuable, in that they're not minions, so he's not really getting the 5 for 1 that we're looking at. You he's know, calculating that way. An even greedier play could actually just be playing the Emperor. Emperor, yeah. Because you do have three ways to armor gain in your hand, and you also have a brawl to control the board in future turns. Yeah, like you could play shield block, armor smith, brawl on effectively the same turn. Much difference between shield maiden and brawl because the brawl will effectively in average. I think Emperor's yeah, Emperor is a greedy play, but it's not that greedy since he's not afraid of dying right now. Like he's gonna be able to play shield block, brawl, then armor smith, or the other way around. Pick your choice. Oh dear. Oh, hello. Life to be incoming. Defend it, Vargas. This, uh, this should force RDU into killing the Emperor and then playing into the Egg, I think. Like, because playing the Egg protects you against Brawl, at the very least. Yeah, I like it. To the face. Yeah, just leaving as many amps as possible on the board just to... Be optimistic and try to yeah try to set up for the uh, Malganis. Yeah, the two turns possibly. away Malganis that Trump will obviously not be able to answer right. Now because uh because Trump, or rather because RDU has traded into that Emperor, now Trump can just play a little bit more defensively and just save the brawl for a later turn. For Ooh. example. <laughs> Frank that bolt now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dr. Seven. Wow, those knives, man. This knife juggler threw, at the very least, 12 knives this game, I think. Oh my god. It's been, it's been pretty crazy. The aims, you wanted to you wanted to keep them for Magnus. <laughs> um, that's pretty good. I mean, if Would you want to go for a Brawl or BKM Hunter here. I think the play is to play as greedily as possible to go for turn 10 Sylvanas Brawl. Oh. And, then, and then you don't die in the process. Because you've played BGH. Right? Possibly. I guess it could just go for Big Game Hunter. But then it, you have so much mana left over. Armor Smith, Armor Hunter and Armor Smith. Yeah. No, I don't think he'll ever keep. Well, he might think about it because he's got Alex Straza plus the Sylvanas back to back. I kind of like the greedy play here. <laughs> I wonder if Trump's going to go for it. In hand. And he looks like he's doing it. Great could success. Still go brawl. No. <laughs> yeah, could still brawl after playing two minions. Yes. Yeah, let's do this. Yes, you mean. Ultimate value. That just means you're really confident. Yeah, that that's what it means. Now, are you life that? Oh, Bane of Doom. Ooh. Wait, what could that really bring out that makes this hell? Actually, a Void Caller would be crazy good against that brawl. <laughs> no, <laughs> nope, uh, not quite yeah. the, the well, same Void here. It, it is a Void something. Yeah, not quite the same. Just curious, why is there any reason to above the egg makes you able to trade into the uh, no matter where the knife hit, you can still trade into the yeah. He, he the wanted minion. the knife juggler to hit in into that and then just trade the what's it called the Nubian egg in basically. Yeah, and now the question is does Trump execute the juggler or place a bonus here or Same both? You could play both, honestly, yeah. 
I really love how slowly Trump is playing this in. Yeah, he doesn't seem to be afraid of anything. I'm a little worried about this, though, if I have to be frank. But I'm not frank. I'm noxious. No, you're noxious. Exactly. <laughs> oh. Whoa. 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 Okay. Whoa. 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 <laughs> what just happened here? Well, I think RD just lost the game. I think what happens is the egg pops off the brawl, so there's a 50% chance that it still no, kill the I don't even it doesn't no, even no, you, matter. Does this, this you, is over? No, you Yeah, you kill the egg. And this is over. Brawl, and then you win. Yeah, that's it. Oh there's my God. I, I, Trump is right now wondering what RD's thought process was. He's like, "Wait, is there something lurking about to hit me in the face or not?" Well, I just think that RDU, um, he just doesn't put Trump on Brawl because Trump has had so many turns to play Brawl, but he just chosen not to do it. So Trump's kind of uh, quote-unquote greedy and defensive play will really be helping him out here. Yeah, I mean, this is... This is perfect. Uh-oh. RDU doesn't seem to care much, but he's scratching his head a bit faster now. Uh. Thanks Actually, for the free Nubrian. Uh... Yeah, I guess, uh... Well, although he's not out of this yet, though. Not completely, at the very least. So, tab, void caller, and defender. That's not too bad. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. It lives through That's the Nerugan. So. Well, the power cars in Trump's hand could make a huge difference. They will make a huge difference. Yeah, I like the Ragnaros here. Yeah. Do you want to attack first, or...? I don't even know if you pop the Void Caller on your own turn. Because uh, if it summons more fine. damage, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Mm. Yeah. You can't allow it to summon even more stuff that you can't handle right away. I just thought it's going to summon Rag, then... Then it could make sense, maybe. Oh yeah, go for the 50-50 that it hits Rag. I mean, the, the Doom Guard if it does come out. Mm -hmm. Alright, yeah, that, that could have been fine. So, is this lethal for RDU, up. or... Oh my god. Okay, no, it did, this didn't backfire yet. Oh no. Two damage. Okay, so he trades and gets... Oh, does he even trade? Ugh. Oh, he got the Void Caller, that's... Wow, okay. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't believe what I'm looking at. I cannot that believe it. Fits, man. <laughs> Those knives for RDU this game have been crazy good. Well, knife hits can be good, but can these boombot hits be great as well? It depends. I think Trump could consider Alexstrasza if the boombots do what they have to. Otherwise, it's going to have I, to be an Armorsmith play and try to get a bit more armor off of this. I kind of like yeah. Armorsmith and, and uh, Bragnaros here. It just fits the curve really well. You get at least two armor. Mm -hmm. And the Ragnaros might be able to do some work as well, especially because there's so many minions on the board that it's really likely for Ragnaros to hit a minion. And down goes an Imp. He wants to kill a minion with that Boombot. It needs to hit something. Yep. Needs to kill... Uh-oh. Ooh. That That's as bad as it got, I think. Or at least it got pretty bad. Not the worst, but... Not the worst. The one damage. If it hits face, quite a bit of damage coming up. Or you could even, you know, tap into power overwhelming at this point. So seven damage on the board. He's five away from the win. No, nope. game nope. boss is not going to do it. Yeah, and game boss is not. Coil. And then Axtraza is right here to help. Can you Killing consider face. killing the maybe even thing? like I don't know? I was considering killing Moro Rag? coiling the. The imp. The oh imp my god. Boss. <laughs> but that no, that doesn't make sense. No, yeah, well, no, with an armor smith. Smith's trades. Exactly. Unless you kill the armor smith of Doomgar, but then you surrender your entire turn of damage. The only out you really had at this point. Well, if this Ragnaros goes phase, this is still not over. Although it's getting pretty close to over either way. Does Trump actually need that one extra health? There's. Nine damage on board. Actually, so it's for, actually if, really hard. Yeah, he's setting up lethal for face if he seven. He needs to find H from the top. That is not a helpful card at all. That is, in fact, the very opposite of that. 
It's a very opposite of a helpful card for. Oh wow! Wow, that's actually really good. Yeah. That now is... he can uh, defender of Argus and, coil. and then coil as well. Does he want the coil? Yeah. I guess he does. It gives yeah, him an yeah. imp, an extra target for Ragnaros. This has been a five, really close game. Against Alex Reza as well. This has been a really close game, and he finds the PO. A second one would be Heaven Sent, or the Doom Guard, in fact, if he's got a second one in this deck. Ooh. Oh, Brom seems really good. Uh, yeah, but it can't kill anything. I mean, if you could, if you could use Rag. Testmaster D11. Yeah, I mean, you could play Grom for the body. I think that's definitely a viable line of play. But I mean. Actually, you probably want to just armor Ruby instead of killing one one. Yeah, because either way, you're spawning more with the M Gang boss if you do anything. But Grom there's armor actually, up. If Rag, if uh, Rag goes face here, there's actually nine damage on board. So if he goes face and Rag goes, yeah, it would be, yeah, it would be lethal. So basically, Rag needs to. Hit the Doom Guard, it... ideally. Basically. Or 2 3 at least. A 2 3, yeah. yeah. The, the Argus or the Doom Guard. Um, so RDU has three fifths of a chance just to win here. Wait, no, he, uh, if he armors up, Wait. he goes up to 14. Wait a minute. Yeah, he's, he's up well, to 14. Yeah, he only has on, the, on the armor up, is fine. Uh, 11. On the armor the up, armor is, up okay. is fine. Yeah. Wow. Okay, but RDU good. could tap into a win here. Like, if, even if Rag goes face, he could still tap into a win. So it's not over yet, and Trump is going to opt for the Cruel Taskmaster play, reducing the odds of Rag hitting a 1-1 in the process, going for the 50-50 on the hit. And it does hit what he needs okay. at this point, but... that's decent. Oh! oh, oh yeah. Wait a minute! <laughs> that's game! That's game. Oh man, what a top deck. No, top nothing Trump could have done. Nothing Trump could have done would have prevented this loss. RDU winning with Zoo versus Warrior. Well, that's the first game taken away, but Trump is going to be able to reuse that control warrior in order to use lineup. I mean, how, how good is it? He's got a hunter left and a warrior, so there's there might be a coin flip in the warrior versus warrior. So resident sleeper, but, you know, 50% win rate on general on either side. So are you going to use control warrior, though? I feel like he's going to... He's one of the players who will lean towards more... I hope he Grim plays Patron. Grim Patron. I think it's a great yeah. deck. And I think against Control Warrior, because it's a control deck, you generally have a bit of an edge. Because you just combo your way to victory. You wait I'm not for so sure about that. Through, I think but... the Control Warrior actually has a slight edge. From the, my past experience. The, the deck but, is yeah. too young but to, to make that claim. Yeah. But I think that the armor up factor does play into it very much. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would have to agree. I would probably say the Control Warrior does have a slight edge. Mm -hmm. But I personally, I would actually put RDU on control warrior as well instead of patron warrior and that's i think that's partly because he knows trump rdu knows trump will probably run warrior so might as well run a greedier warrior in order to uh, counter that warrior right right that's interesting Which that's a good line of thinking yeah that's yeah. definitely yeah. good and uh and trump we haven't seen any greedy cards in his deck yet like rag alexstrasza those aren't necessarily greedy what we really need is um Ysera? cards like yasera and perhaps uh gorhal those are really the key cards in the warrior matchup, right? Yeah, because it'll go to fatigue, not systematically, because some some games end very prematurely with you know shield maiden beatdowns that end up and uh, you know you take armor away, then shield slam becomes useless, and eventually it snowballs into a victory. But a lot of the time, if both players draw equally well, it'll go down to fatigue, and the Isera plays, for instance, will be the winning ones. Like Gorhal giving him, uh, you know, a four for one. Those plays make uh, the control. Versus control warrior matchup a lot easier. Yep. Uh, we are seeing that yeah. the next match is going to be Trump playing the warrior and RDU playing the hunter. So, depending on the type of hunter it is, it could either be a good matchup or a bad matchup for Trump. Warrior is favored against face hunter, very favored in fact, but it's not so favored against mid range hunter, which is the type of hunter that has been coming back into the scene more lately. Um, that being said, RDU. He is kind of known more for face hunter than he is mid range hunter. Is he just not? Like, I've seen him play mid range hunter in the past, and I think if your opponent is playing warrior, um, you might just queue up a mid range into it. Like, cause I, I know RDU prepares a lot for his lineups. That's one of the things he does most. 
prepare his lineups like to perfection or what he feels is perfection. And I think bringing mid range against Trump would be a great call. Mm -hmm. it yeah. Looks like mid range for the Paula Shredder. Yeah, definitely. But you say that RDU is good at preparing lineups, but sometimes he over prepares. He oh yeah, he he thinks one step too far and then outthinks himself into playing bad decks effectively. But yeah, Trump has been playing a lot, a lot of Warrior, so maybe that's what RDU was hoping for. Shredder in Warrior is something that I haven't seen in Trump's version of the Warriors, but it's it will definitely help in this matchup. Because one of the things that um, Warriors struggle against mid-range Hunter is that you really like the mid-range board. Yeah, exactly. Very, you very really important. want the board control. You want to set it up so that you can deal with high mains going into turn six. I really feel that this matchup is a lot about, like the early game is all about who can take board control early so that it's all about whether the warrior can deal with a turn six high main or not. So ideally for Trump, he wants to set up his board in a way that he has about five power on board going into turn six. Like he drops a Lothep down or perhaps he has a combination of a Cruel Taskmaster plus a Pilot Treader on turn five. So when uh, RDU plays the Savannah high main, then he has the exact right answers. Do you agree with the, uh, by the way, I'm just out of the, going back to the mulligan phase. Do you agree with the Trump keeping three, four, and five drop? I don't know. I think it's a bit greedy. <laughs> like, it, you, it, that means he expected mid range, that's for sure. That's as much as we can say, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, certainly. And this is the playoff deciding match, actually. This is going to decide who gets to stay in the top three. Yeah, we will have to remind you guys from Group A or Group Alliance, we have Strife Crow finishing first, and then we have Firebat finishing second and Show finishing third. For Group B or Horde, we have Life Coach finishing first. Hyped will be either finishing second or third, and either Colento or Trump will be the final player to make it to the playoffs. So after this match um, between RDU and Trump, it could be Trump making it to the playoffs, or it could be Kalento making it to the playoffs. Yeah. So after this match, we'll know exactly who will be in the Kangwood Pro League Finals playoffs. Yeah, Trump. This is Trump's big, yeah, big match at this point. Like he wants to win this, so he's playing the execute on the creeper, pops the houndmaster. I think this is a. It's going to allow him to use his weapon, but he's getting, you know, dangerously low on health. I feel yeah, for somebody without an AOE, damage. without an AOE effect at all, this is getting a bit problematic for him. RDU almost just has to wait it out, and... I mean, Trump's curve is way off. He needs to find something very soon. Not sure that's it. Yeah. Armorsmith, armor up. Kill the Mad Scientist. Wipe most of the board. Would you kill Mad Scientist here? <laughs> well... Too, but then you're, you know you're I guess you could pop the range. Shredder, but... That's so much potential damage against yeah. you. Oh no. Whoa! Well, he's dead. Yep, this is over. Yeah, he's dead. That was a quick Honor game. Mid range yeah. Hunter just punched Control Warrior to complete submission. Hey, he doesn't well, have I to guess use that's the it. <laughs> Oh wow! Talk about a quick game. That's not what I expected. I expected Control Warrior to put up a bigger fight, but that start from Trump was very greedy. Yeah. Way too slow. Are you, very greedy. Are you kind of stretches a bit? He's like, yeah, I got this. No problem. Yeah, and then uh, the reverse sweep effect of Kalento's play against Orange earlier will kick in. Right? This is uh, this is definitely possible. It's not over. I mean, Trump still has a Warrior to go through. Uh, so mm -hmm. has Warrior that RD has to go through. And the only deck he's got left is, uh, is this Warrior. So it's going to be a mirror match. Um, and I assume Trump the... has, I assume Trump yeah. has Mech, Mech yeah. Mage and Druid. Tr Trump almost certainly has Mech Mage, and yeah. if it's Mech Mage, Druid, and Warrior, I think Trump still has a chance. Druid is going to be favored. Mech Mage, I would think, is also going to be slightly favored. Warrior, I flip have to coin. say, yeah, flip a coin there. But I have to say, if I had to give it to someone, it would be RDU in that matchup because he might be just bringing, like I said, the more controlling warrior and it's usually the warrior that's bigger that has bigger minions is going to be the one that's favored yeah if he's prepared against trump he's going to be very greedy with his build and he might have even included you know pilot sky golems at that point you know that's how greedy it might have been 
where he builds a deck that's just made to make uh, other control warriors feel like they're lacking answers. Playing the neutral high main effectively. I wonder why people don't use the pilot, uh, Sky Golem as much. I it was cool. really popular in Control Paladin and Control Warrior for a while, mm -hmm. right? It's like it it was the perfect way to make Control Warriors struggle. Um, and Control <laughs> Paladin had two Sky Golems and two Shredders for a while with double lay on hands, double heal bot. Like it, like it was called like Purple Turtle, like the Turtle uh, Turtle Drank's deck, Purple Drank deck, Turtle Drank. Yes, Purple Drank's deck. I think was running that. And it was really good for a while. I'm not sure it's seeing much play nowadays, though. Also, to now to think about it, Trump is one of the players who played the Paladin for the longest time and well, until recent, yeah. very recent, right? True. Kuyuki so, before him, and then Trump picked up the torch. Yeah. And then Control Warriors, especially greedier ones, struggle against them. So maybe RDU didn't bring it. We'll see. Oh, man. It's going to be Patron Warrior from RDU. Yeah, we're looking at the starting hands. You'll just see them come up on the screen in a second here. Um, it is definitely... The Gnomish Inventor is a pretty big giveaway. Yeah. Uh, this he is just got the really same exact hand. I'll show you Mulligan the way. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, this is going to be... This is one of my favorite decks to watch and one of my favorite decks to commentate because just so many crazy things can happen, especially when Emperor Thorazin comes down on turn 6. I think Emperor is almost the key card of the match, like of the deck. It's funny what that card has enabled. Amazing things. Yeah. I like the fact and, that it adds so many so much diversity to combo decks, possibly. Things that couldn't have been run are not possible. In mirror match, you usually don't want to play a lot of against a warrior turn three on curve because your I opponent is likely gonna have web. But I guess in this matchup, if you're playing Green Patch on one, it's okay to just yeah, play it. Yeah, you can, you can just play on Curve, draw into as many things as possible. Yeah, and now he's found two Frothings in the War Song. This is just a disaster waiting to happen. But I think this uh, Gnomish Inventor is telling Trump, wait, this is not Control Warrior. I think uh, this is still fine. Like, RDU's hand isn't super amazing because he doesn't have um, many card draws going into it. Like, he can build up his board now. But I think ideally he might have wanted like uh, either a loot hoarder or a second acolyte or something like that, just to draw into his combo, and also just to draw into Emperor Thorazin on turn six. Yeah, as soon as possible. The fraud thing is actually a big win condition, and Trump does find it, but that's not RDU's hand. This is that's a pretty nice good Emperor hand. turn. <laughs> oh yeah. Talk about the value here. Into into Doctor Six now. We're talking. Yeah, we're talking about seven coins gotten for free, and uh, wow. I, I wouldn't like to see a control warrior with an emperor on seven cards in hand. No. Not one bit. This is kind of awkward turn. How me. often does RDU punch face? No, never. Would you also play well whirlwind? It's happening. He's punching face. <laughs> oh my god. Is he is he really punching face? Yes. Oh man. This it's, is it's happening. This is it. This is with a taskmaster, I think. Oh man, you you do have to cruel task, right? Mm -hmm. At this just point, because it's already weak to whoa. execute. You just like shove all in. <laughs> oh, maybe he'll armor up. All right, he's gonna keep that okay, for uh, a grim patron, maybe. Because he... later on, you can also just use that to kill your opponent off. In lane with the uh, frosting buzzer, you still have the combo with the frosting charge. Yeah, it's on eight mana for now, but it's still okay. And Trump doesn't have the answer to the armor smith right away. Not that big of a deal, to be honest. But yeah, I have to say, I kind of favor Trump right here. Yeah, I, I think his follow-ups are just insane. The shield maiden, the Alex draws on eight. I think he's going to be in a great spot. The the lack of card draw for RDU was really like if he'd had a battle rage in that hand when this happened, this would have been great. But there was none. We just armor up here. Yeah, I think I would. Wait, can you believe this? We're gonna see three matches, up to three matches with Grim Patron. Well, up I'm to. certainly excited. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I I really do want to see that. This is the deck I've been waiting for. Oh, here comes Taskmaster yeah. into pain. Okay. Wait, does he have an answer to this? Um. 
Yeah, RDU just has to go more, more all in. That's his like only opportunity, to, to be honest. That's it's... a lot of damage on Proth and Berserker, by the way. Yeah. Six four already. Oh. Well, there's an answer, Brawl. Well, what if it misses? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Here's oh, another never mind. Yeah, that's. Yes. <laughs> wow. Oh, stop asking me questions, dang it. Give me an answer for everything. Might as well just go for Shell Maiden and Shell Slam. Even with, he doesn't need Brawl. In case you can save a Brawl just in case your opponent have draws into Green Patron. Some sort of combo. Uh, a battle rage. Uh, That's two card draws right here. Not bad. I it's funny here uh, that. What's up? Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say it's funny that you actually want yourself to be damaged when you're well, running battle rage. Yeah, it's kind of the uh, the exact opposite of what you know. Uh, some some approaches you take on Warrior. What I like about it though is that it plays really amazingly well in the idea that Blizzard probably had in the development of Hearthstone with Mortal Strike and now Revenge. Where you're trying to get yourself in a specific health range as low as possible and benefit off that. Uh, now, what Trump has to be thinking now is he really doesn't want to play these armor smiths actually because no, they're going to give his opponent infinite Grim Patrons. Yeah, it's so dangerous. I actually it's feel like even though he wants armor, these armor smiths are going to be dead in his hand for the rest of the game. RDU has a... I mean, we're favoring him, but it's still possible that he's able to take this. We are favoring Trump the whole game, right? Oh, yeah, right. We're favoring Trump all, all the games. So RDU could still get it. It's close enough, depending on the hands that are found. I mean, a two-mana Warsong Commander is nothing to scoff at. Man. So, Alex, take the armor smith. Yep, Trump's gonna have three armor smith potentially. <laughs> and that the 3 1 armor smith isn't too bad against yeah. Green Patron, the, certainly not. Yeah, the problem here is though, like, pretty much R because RDUs has used both Frothing Berserkers, there's His... no other minions that he can charge for lethal here. No, there, that's, what I, no. that's what I thought initially. When I saw both Frothings, I was pretty excited for RDU because those are the cards that you need against Control Warrior to insta kill him. So I think he might have Worgens in his deck, maybe. Um, I don't but know if most he tailored these it. days though pretty much cut the Worgens. I know, I know. There's none pretty much anywhere. But I'm curious to see maybe if he thought he had something beyond the Frothings because his lines of play seemed to indicate that he was, he didn't care much about them because he really went all in on them. Maybe a bit too early perhaps. Uh, Trump's Emperor was definitely a big deal though. It's really easy to fall into that trap um, when you're playing Green Picture on deck. To think that you can you can get away with those card oh, you plays, can. then very often you really can't. Maybe that's just what happened. Yeah, it's like, just I'll have so much damage and I have charges in my hand, I have a bunch of draws coming up, I have great love. Maybe I can just go all in like this and then that just didn't happen. So, Warsong, Loot Hoarder. Now, kill the Armorsmith and execute Alex, and then you see where that leads you. I charge our Loot Hoarder? Yeah, that's what you do. <laughs> SM Orc. Oh my god. Might as well just go seven. for Charge, Charge, and. No, 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 no. You can't <laughs> do that. <laughs> but you're you're oh, leaving dude. so much mana. No, it's not about mana efficiency this game. Emperor Thor's Day, sure, was good for RDU this game. Yeah. <laughs> It was all too good. Goodness. But like I say, yeah, it's not so much about mana efficiency, it's more about the cards, and RDU didn't really have any cards. Oh, Trump will execute the War Song. Yeah, I like it. There's not too many good execute targets in this deck, mm -hmm. and you, the War Song is just so dangerous. Oh! Game Patron is one of the targets. Yeah, well. <laughs> but I'm not sure. Did the comeback start here? Does it? It depends Possibly. on the. It, it really depends on the loot hoarder's ability to draw something relevant. Mm -hmm. Get in here, pylon. What if it hits for one? <laughs> what if it hits for one? Oh, that his face. This is perfect. Everything. No, but just getting an extra grim patron because you can. But your board will be full anyways, right? Wow. Okay. Oh, wow. That's convenient. Whoa, oh, whoa! That dog oh, next man. from RDU. You know we're we're going a little crazy here. Yeah, this but... is brawl. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, this, this is, is brawl. Chuck's hat. Never mind. Pylon. 
And then there's just gonna be a brawl play and all the hype is dead. <laughs> I <laughs> love on each other. One. Yeah, you know, oh. Masan, you're, you come from a StarCraft <laughs> background, so you know that these Grim Patrons, they're actually Protoss units. Yeah, they, they are. Oh they pile on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you must construct additional patrons. They're uh, colossus. I mean pylons. And the brawl is like force field. <laughs> the RD is like, oh well, that's too bad. Here I had uh... a play, and now I don't anymore. Well, it was a good brawl. I mean, it was yeah, a legit was. brawl. Like it was a real one. <laughs> yeah. This wasn't some kind of fake, a fake brawl. brawl? There Somewhere. are fake brawls. Yes. When you do it on a flame imp and two implosion imps. That's a fake brawl. This was like oh, okay. the patrons fighting with each other. That that's that's what I call a brawl. Okay. I live for these moments. Oh my goodness, the draws. Well, I don't think RDU is gonna be able to kill Trump. Hey, you I never just know. Just wanna put that out there. Just wanna put that out there now. Maybe he plays Rug. Oh. Maybe he plays Doctor Boom. Maybe he plays uh, Gromash. Who knows? Yeah, most decks these days do they do play. They Gromash, do play Gromash, but... yeah. But also at the same time, most decks they do cut the uh, they cut Doctor Boom. I don't think his he plays them by the way because he has Lou Hoarders and Battle Rage. That's a little draw. I, I think um I think yeah, that makes sense. after the Alish incident, I'm not playing Doctor Boom ever again. <laughs> and current patron of Warrior. <laughs> I I learned something from that. Well, after the election, oh man, even a sludge vulture. Uh, I mean, everything oh, no. in Trump's deck at this point is just burying RDU further and further. In the RDU could draw the entirety of his deck right now and do nothing, <laughs> and he yeah. would still lose pretty much. Yeah, because like no his he's no. used both four song commanders, right? And besides the and he's used both frothings, so pretty much the only threat is a grim patron left, and without the grim patron. There's page, like without a Warsong commander, you're not gonna be able to activate the Grim Patron, right? So the rest of his deck is like useless stuff, like battle rages, unstable ghouls, armor smiths, some weapons, I guess. Oh, um, well, there is Grom. Yeah, but, but the, mean, it still does nothing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's a yeah, sad it's gonna day. be executed at best. Executed. <laughs> wow, that's at that, best. that's really really grim. I just want to see uh, Trump take RDU to fatigue now. That'll be fun. Well, if RD is going to lose that fight every time, but yeah. I, I wonder if Trump has the BM in him to do that. Actually, if he top decks the Green Patron here, or very soon, one of them might I don't be think, I don't on. think Grom is... Well, okay. Yeah. I, he disagrees. I mean, you have to make YOLO plays at this point. There's yeah. no other yeah. way. Like face. Well played. Well, he is on 33 health, so I guess... If he plays, oh, well, <laughs> that's that's not it's good. everything going wrong. So Trump, which decks are left in Trump's lineup? Trump, Trump has, has... Warlock and Warrior? Hunter, uh, yeah, Warrior, sorry, Mage and Druid. Druid and Mage. Wow. Oh, even two Dread Corsairs, that's interesting. Even it, isn't that pretty standard? I think uh, a lot of players have been cutting one of the Dread Corsairs. Okay. So instead of running really? two. One. Interesting. Yeah. I was not aware of that uh, that variance, but then again, I think it's one of the flex slots. That second Dread Corsair is definitely one of the flex spots of the deck. Yeah. So yeah, Trump takes it with Control Warrior with Mech, well Mech Mage probably and Druid left. Um, I wonder which of the those decks. I I think Patron is actually not too bad against Druid because of the executes. Yeah. I think it's actually favored against. It's Druid. a favorite. Yeah. It's actually very favored. Okay. I heard. Really? Yeah. I, I, very much. What so. I've heard. I, it's about 50-50, but it's definitely at least 50-50, I think. That's what I thought um, at, at first. At least in, in which way? <laughs> which direction? Oh, at least 50-50 for the Grim Patron. So either Grim Patron is favored or or it's 50-50. Okay. All right, got it. You have so many conditions. You can you can also burst the uh, Druid down easily. Yeah. yeah. With the double frothing berserker. Well, yeah, the two. Well, really, the two win conditions that you have, or the three win conditions, are bursting your opponent down with a. Uh, Farthing Berserkers or Gim Patrons or uh, Grom or the third one which I think is the most common probably is just getting a board with so many Grim Patrons that your opponent can't clear it at all. Uh, who plays Starfall yeah. right? Swipe doesn't work so that's out of the window most of the time. 
Um, so it's really problematic for the Druid player. Like if you can populate the board with four Grim Patrons, usually you end up taking the game at that point. Like three to yeah. four Grim Patrons is like the tipping point for the board control. We have the next matchup ready for both players. Uh, RDU, we have heard, is going to be playing Warrior again, of course. And Trump will be selecting his Druid for the next match. All again, right. we, have to, we have to remind you guys, this match is probably the most important match of this entire league so far because yeah. it will be the deciding match of the final um, slot for the playoffs. It's either Colento or Trump fighting for that final slot, and if Trump wins this match, he moves on to the playoffs. If he loses this match, then Colento moves on to the playoffs. Yeah, Colento got his win earlier on, so that that he needed he needs two things. Colento needed two things to win versus Orange earlier. He got a reverse sweep against him, and he needs Trump to lose versus RDU. And basically, right now RDU is one game ahead of Trump, so it's two to one. And if RDU just wins against his Druid, since he's so favored, this could be the the end of the match. Yeah. I wonder, do you keep Harrison Jones here? I guess. Oh, it seems like a nice do. idea, yeah. yeah. Set up a dead's bite off whenever you're ready. So you don't want them to activate a bite on their turn as their wish. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, even a wild Ooh. growth? <laughs> no, that's you know, a nice curve. What's funny is that Ancient of Lore is usually the best card in the Jura deck against Warrior. But against Patron Warrior, I'm not entirely so sure anymore. It may be a bit too slow. Yeah, it's funny. That's kind of funny. Yeah. Ancient of Lore being too slow. Oh, well, maybe Ooh. it's going to be too fast in this specific game. <laughs> I turn four Ancient of Lore. Is this real? All right. Yeah, so two armor smiths is also um, not completely common here. Double wild growth. This is just oh insane. Well, she's gonna, he's gonna get a shade for his turn Armor four. Armor doesn't really help against the druid. I think it will affect Todd maybe. It's not that bad though. I mean, it can give you a bit extra durability, and it's always pinging the face for the armor the druid gets. So at least it counterpoints the hero power for all that's worth. I think it's well, pretty I nice. I have to kind of agree with uh, Masan here. Like mm -hmm. a lot of players don't run two armorsmith, and a huge reason for that is because it's not too great in the control matchups. Yeah. And it might be hurting RDU because Trump is known for, as being more of a control player. So this might be a reason why the armor smiths uh, might not be as great here as compared to some other matchups. No, I, could, I could agree with you. I don't think it's going to be... If you're building against a specific type of deck and it's control, I don't think the armor smiths further your agenda as much as other cards could. Well, Trump has double lore, Drake, Scenarius. This is looking pretty sweet. Finds the roar and the Keeper of the Grove. Yep. Pretty passive turn, but he's about to put out a lot of damage. Yeah, he's gonna be getting so much damage output. Fortunately, no battle rage here. Battle rage would yeah. be sweet. Come on, here's a free dread corsair. I would probably trade it. Yeah, play it. I don't. Would you the armor smith or whoa? No, the dread corsair. I think it's too good not to play. I mean, if it's free, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm actually a little surprised he used the Whirlwind so early. No, it's pretty good. I mean, you, the best time you're going to be using it is something like Frothing to get a kill. But if you can play for the board right now and set up enough pressure, that's good enough. With the Grom in hand and the possibility of enabling it later, it's always decent. Mm -hmm. Now look at the amount of armor that Harrison Jones gives to RD. <laughs> that's a bit obscene, to be honest. Yeah. I can't believe I'm going to say armor. that, but this Harrison Jones almost feel horrible. <laughs> like, you, you almost can't play it. It's... Well, to be honest, like, do you really care that your opponent has that much armor? And then and He easier. just buys time to, to get the combo and OTK me. I, I think I do a little bit. <laughs> Makes a little sense. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the amount of armor are these going to get. <laughs> I'm looking at this and I literally can't believe it. Because in Control Warrior versus Druid matchup, um, as long as the Druid drop, I think Control Warrior usually runs out of cards mm -hmm. and gets combo down. But in this matchup, it's actually the other way around, right? Yep. So you you are you're the one who doesn't want them to draw. You're the one who try to keep everything kind of low. Yeah. The warrior is the one who knocks, right? 
I mean, it's actually it's it's. I, I like it's that. Much much better than just letting him have it so that he can play with the green patrons and frostbiters. <laughs> oh man, I don't even know what I'm looking at. Look at this armor count. It's a, <laughs> it's armor. over nine thousand for sure. This scouter, man, the scouter. It's gonna get bigger. Oh goodness! And he finds the Emperor Thorsten to go with uh, this. Trump is in for a treat. Twenty. Two. 22 armor. So, are do you realize that yeah. Trump was trying to possibly set up some kind of uh, follow up? So he just goes ahead and makes a trade himself. Yeah. Now, do you just do you scenarios here, or do you actually have to force of nature to clear this? Or oh, he draws into wrath, so he can actually keep her in wrath. This. Yeah. This keep is probably his play. Yeah. Unfortunately, keep her in wrath. It leaves him with three mana remaining. Mm -hmm. So you savage war for good measure, right? <laughs> Well, Just to fill up the curve. Well, on the previous turn, Trump could have actually Savage Roared instead of mm -hmm. Hero Power. And yeah. he chose to do Hero Power just to preserve the Savage Roar. So I think he's going to value that Savage Roar. I mean, at 47 health from RDU, I just don't see Trump putting out <laughs> the damage it takes at this point. But it's possible that RDU whiffs at every turn, finds very little that he actually needs. It's possible. Trump does have card draw. He's got sturdy minions that are hard to remove. So if he gets the board, RD is going to be hard pressed to take it back. I think it's going to come down to really like one tempo play. Wrath hero power into the Emperor is putting your your health at risk. Too yeah, much. I agree. It, it feels like an unnecessary risk at this point. Um, I think at this point you want to be using cards that just put more tempo onto the field rather than. Well, never mind. Ooh. You talk about a top deck. Well, then again, he did draw half his deck at this point, so. Yeah, that's true. You, let's not. I was gonna uh, say, like, you want to draw, you want to use your cards that get more value or get more uh, tempo on the board rather than get value. Yeah. But I guess if you can top like like that, you can just play whatever you want. Yeah. No Gnomish Inventor, Loot Hoarder, Pass, I think, and he'll Armor Up. Really, I think or Grom. Your Grom. Just like Grom. Grom. So you Grom into a possible removal piece for it. Interesting. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. But yeah, I don't think I would. Do I it think I'd keep it for the. It's an option the okay. to consider. Yeah, maybe I'm too greedy with my Groms. Because like without the combo in hand, I don't think going for the kill just yet is. Is well, worth my it. Well, my rationale, my rationale would be, um, my opponent had a kind of looked like he had a hard time dealing with my Emperor the last turn, so mm -hmm. if I put a ten five on the board, maybe. He has some difficulty dealing with that as well. Well, you've and seen even if he you've, does, yeah. If he, yeah, go ahead. You've seen big game hunters, so if the you're kind of the the game is developed enough that you just need a lot of ash from on your board to win the game. Wait, what? And, we saw BGH, especially with the fucking berserker. Yeah. Well, we haven't seen BGH in this game. Yeah, not in this I've game. Not in Trump's this game. Stack. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, that makes sense, Masan. No, the my question was is, that you so don't want, the, like, order. want the big. You don't want that to be a game hundred, then you will likely, more likely, lose the game. Oh man, these draws will be very important for RDU. He's gonna have to find an answer to this board very soon because this is not yeah. looking good. Oh man, this oh, is no. everything uh -huh. but what he wants. RDU did in fact whiff. You know, I did say Trump would have a hard time of it, but RDU has been whiffing at every turn almost. So Grim Patron. Cruel Task does nothing. Dread Corsair Frothing, I guess, could remove at least one minion, but that's super vulnerable to any type of removal. And Trump has more than he needs. Oh, there's a big game hunter. Scenarios for plus two, plus two is going... Like, if RD doesn't play that's Brawl, insane. he probably doesn't play it. This game is done. A rip. You could draw into... Into I, I'm shout, listening. Okay. And then you draw into <laughs> Warson Commander, and then you wow. play Green Patcher and Board Clear. Right, right. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll grant you that one. It's possible. Something like that is that. Yeah. yeah, that's probably actually it's probably the most likely scenario of all the things that could happen on a Green Patron deck, unless he plays Brawl straight up, which would be good enough. Oh no. He well, he's gonna get two Grim Patrons for all that's worth. Or he can just clear two minions right away. I think he might just have to clear. There's just too much damage on the board. Yeah, too much damage. So, what is RD waiting for? The magical Warsong Commander play? Yeah, 
He's looking for draw, but... Even if he gets a Warsong Commander, though, that 6-8 might... is just, it's just, like, immune to Grim Patrons. Exactly. That's why you need a commanding shot. <laughs> the t new text on the Claw, <laughs> immune to Grim Patrons. I mean, I'd love to see, a, like, a single commanding shot in Grim Patron decks is pretty nice for situations like these that got out of hand with double Wild Growth Start. I have to point out that the double Wild Growth Start from Trump was really important in an unfavored matchup like this one. Yeah, especially, uh, like, following that up with an Ancient of Lore. Yeah. That's, that's just, just the best start you could hope for. Wow, look at this uh, controlling nature of Trump. And Trump, um, you failed me. You didn't put the pilot shredder in the middle. I wonder if he'll realize <laughs> it in faceball. Probably not. Well, I called it too early. This game is far from over for Trump. Yeah, just vomit your board now. Uh, yeah, see what's next, and really hope you don't die here, which you will. <laughs> I see your optimism is seeping back in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's rip. I think that's just an insta kill, right? We'll force an H Savage War. I mean, I, d I wouldn't even count this. I yeah, I would just go yeah. full. Yeah, I wouldn't even count it. I would just Shield go. Shield, we count. It's a 17 damage there, plus 8, 25, plus 14. Yeah, that's so 39 damage. That's one, wow, that's one above. Wow, one damage off of. Wow, okay. It was actually closer than I thought. I would probably have guessed this was around like 42 damage. Also, Monk. He doesn't have. To <laughs> 42, the answer to everything. On he doesn't uh, Treader. <laughs> Not being at the center because Force Nature Savage will make it up for it, right? Oh, good, good Maybe point. Maybe thought point. about that. <laughs> you ever thought about that, uh, Monk? Did you know? Yeah. Well, I was hopeful that we'd see uh, a really good Grim Patron moment, but we did. We saw it last game. You know what? I got my brawl. I have nothing to complain about. I, I got my brawl. I I'm good. All right. I got yeah. it. All right, all right. So we're actually going to go into the deciding game here. It's going to be RDU. His Grim Patient Warrior against the most probably Mech Mage from Trump. And uh, I, I feel like at this point, Kalento must be messaging RDU right now. He's like, what are you doing? $10,000, man. $10,000 for you to win this. And RDU has to put on his like excessive scouting glasses to get the power over $18,000. $10,000 yeah, so, esports dollars. And I have to say, this... <laughs> Like, throughout this Kingwin Pro League, throughout the last, like, nine weeks or so, we've yeah. had so many matches and so many games. But this game, the upcoming game, yeah. Mech Mage from Trump, a Warrior from RDU, is going to be the most important game in the entire Pro League. Yeah, for the playoff spot that Kalento is currently occupying, but Trump could dethrone him. And if he does, Kalento has no way to swing back in for a chance in no. the playoff. So this is going to be it. Uh, if Trump gets it, this is a really big deal. And it's also really important for Trump. I mean, you're getting in the finals, right? So it's not just uh, Kalento's... Like, basically, Kalento's fate, as you said, is out of his hands. That That's all there is to it. Exactly. We're getting to the game soon. I hope uh, I hope we get to see an interesting game and not a blowout. Those, those tend to be... Uh, they tend to happen. You ever see that where, like, a game is super hyped and then within three turns... Fire back <laughs> mode, it's over. <laughs> You're like, oh well, I guess I guess that was fun. That's pretty good starting it, I would say, from Trump at least. Yeah, definitely. Mad scientist, blast mage, claw he's curving pretty much flawlessly. Yeah, RDU, I would, yeah what's exactly. That? I would actually just keep all of it. Yeah. Mm hmm Not not the best starting hand, but it's definitely above average. I I don't think this like Grim Patron does very well versus Mech Mage, to be honest. I can't say I've had like great success with it. I don't be too sure. Yeah, I'm not too sure which one would be better. With a snow chugger up. I mean there's no shield slam, there's no execute yet, there's no axe, no death bite at the moment. If the snow chugger comes out and RDU can't remove it right away, it's essentially his grave being dug at that point. But then there are so many things you, your opponent can't really play or do again at Green Patrons when it actually comes down. Yeah. You have to have removal for it, and which can be difficult as like Mage to keep it. No, he needs to keep Frostbolt, I guess. If he finds it, this is going to be like the most important card. I guess the only time, like it's pretty much the same thing as Druid, is if you get a full board of Green Patron, Mech Mage doesn't remove it very often, but they get the initiative a lot faster than you do. Yeah, I'm sticking fast in the mm -hmm. case, this case. 
So Trump is thinking whether or not he wants to play Mad Scientist, Snow Chugger, or Coin Out. I don't see anything but Snow Chugger being a great play here. But. Yeah, I have to agree. Oh. Step one. <laughs> now, now he's actually got an answer to uh, a possible. Like, if he finds the execute, that's a way to get rid of the Snow Chugger if everything goes wrong. If everything were to go wrong, he would still be able to kill a Snow Chugger. This Frothing Berserker is kind of funny. Like, how do you deal with this? Like, as you play Blast Mage? I mean. Oh. I mean, how often does it fail? 100%. Oh, okay. <laughs> you were 0%. 100%. Yeah, okay. Amaz math right here. Double oh, whirlwind. Done, right? Well, that was. Uh, that world. That, like, the whirlwind was good, but now I think he's going to have to use it for card draw as soon as possible. And he does. I think that's pretty solid. He's got the Emperor already, though, so this could come in really handy. Getting a. Like, a. Mana cost reduction on this. Ooh. And the beatdown is real. Wow, uh, Whoa! actually going to get really punished here. Yeah, very much so. Yes. I, I wonder if he thought that like that specific line of play would come up, because this is a crazy hand, and crazy play from RDU. Getting a good battle rage as well. as well. It's crazy. Accidentally whirlwind? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Accidentally whirlwind, <laughs> escape concede. <laughs> Prep coin level, uh, level shame. And RDU is definitely dropping this Emperor Thorson no matter what happens next turn, right? Yeah, just oh, yeah. All, all the cards in his hand are just so low mana, and you want to decrease all of them even more. So you get a lot of free cards, a lot of one mana cards. Yeah. RDU is going to be under, under the gun very soon here. Maybe finding a weapon would change his play. Because yeah, he might consider like the Dread Corsair with it, but yeah, Emperor trade into the Mad Scientist just to remove damage on the board. Because next turn, you'll be able to uh, play like a really bad creature anyway, like either a Cruel Taskmaster to start off, or um, a Loot Hoarder. So you activate the Mirror Entity. Or do you play Grim Patron and create the biggest Grim Patron board ever? <laughs> oh God. No. Okay. You could give your opponent a Grim Patron, that would be kind of fun. Yeah, that's the, that's the point. Well, Trump is trading. Oh no! Whoa, what a great card for RDU! <laughs> what a great card for RDU here. Oh no, do you, do you so, ping and kill that? I think, <laughs> I think you have to ping it right now, like while you yeah, still can. Oh my god. Get out of this, as, like while you can. He was gonna ping anyway. Yeah. So essentially, this is like Trump didn't get a creature and he damaged his spider tank for two. Oh dear. It's pretty good for RDU though. I think he's forced to do this. Trump has yeah. no other choice. You don't want to keep that alive. <laughs> not as mech mage, no. <laughs> In fact, so you do not. An acolyte. I think this turn is maybe Probably. quarter. Yeah. I would I would venture to say so. I think it's the most sensible card to play. So do you play Grim Patron, Whirlwind, Cruel Task, and then like have as many Grim Patrons as you can over the course of a few? I turns? want a Taskmaster first, but yes, that's gonna be insane. Mm -hmm. A lot of them will just die off. If you think about it, Spain kills five of them and then yeah, by getting four of them, he's also not allowing Trump to get a perfect. Clear, unless he trades away a lot of his stuff. So, Trump's gonna have to ping the five one, train to the three two, train to the three three, and then Frostbolt. Unless he just goes full face and plays, you know, a Noyotron and puts his opponent on the clock. I don't think a Noyotron is actually like you'd rather not play a Noyotron. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. I, re I recognize that, but I wonder like if he had a Fireball here, this would be like the ultimate turn. I think you would consider going face if you had. Actually, to. as long as there's no charge, Noyotron isn't too bad. Yeah, there's... Because you just need to buy yourself turn yeah. out two. I do think, like, you're on a clock now. Like, you can't deal with this board effectively, so... Well, yeah. he does. He do, he can do it. He can ping the, the... He can clear everything and not leave any Grim Patrons behind. Can he clear everything? Yeah. Well, not... Oh, yeah, yeah, he can. Guess, he can. But he can clear all the Grim Patrons at the very least. Exactly. 
What if he finds an unstable ghoul? Oh. <laughs> and he, he doesn't manage to get out of this alive. Alright. I did not jinx it. At the very least. Yeah, Nox no stupid. Oh snap. I feel like there was a shots fired somewhere in there. <laughs> well, this is the car that says uh, that, says that right? Yeah, it's the Stone Splitter Trog. Of which you did not know the name. Last time we cast it. Yeah. <laughs> You're like the Trog guy. The guy that's like, yeah, the guy. The Trog. I have to say, that fact has still not changed. <laughs> I, it, I'm not really surprised, to be honest. But I think right now, RDU is in an amazing position. That Grim Patron turn he got, just the turn before that was, like, that was enabled by the Emperor, was absolutely devastating. Yeah, Trump will have to top deck something like an Archmage Jantanize to get out of this. It's not over yet, and he could get the win yeah. if he finds a Fireball. Just a Fireball might be enough, but the taunt from the Dread Corsair is going to be a bit of a problem. Yeah, not only that, but the Armor Smith is also going to be a huge problem. Mm -hmm. Oh, oof. nice, nice, uh, nice card to find here. Yeah, Firework essentially will give Just him a very first, cheap right? Dread, for Cors Dread Corsair. Yeah, by a very cheap, you mean free? You know, I think uh, you can do what you want because a pirate is free. Wait a minute. What does he have? Are you counting for lethal? No, no, there's no way there's he has no lethal way. here. Yeah, there's no way as well. But he can get a really nice and clean board clear. Well, not board clear, but like a really solid board at this point. Like with the Dread Corsair being able to kill a minion and the mech being removed from the uh, Cogmaster. I was gonna say I'm a little surprised we didn't see the armor smith fall down, but I don't think there was a reason to play it. Did he even? All right. War elemental is no help here. That's funny that he has war elemental in his deck. Just uh, more four drops, more stuff against warrior, against rogue, against hunter. Definitely. Um, I don't think it's running Tron, but War Elemental's still solid. If Tron yeah. finds the Archmage, this could just be the game-winning card. Oh, yeah. But then what do you kill here? Grom? <laughs> I, I'm going to say the Grom, <laughs> but you, you, you kill what you want, right? Yeah. I mean, you could kill the Warzone Commander if you wanted, but... It's turn 10. It's going to be insane turn next turn for RD. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he gets as good a turn as he can get with the Warzone Commander. Trump is aware of it, but what choice does he really have at this point? Unfortunately. And he's gonna try to play with the fireballs. Oh man, Trump's turn- I mean, RDU's turn here is going to be insane. Oh, <laughs> Grim Patron! Oh, oh, the armor. And the draws. So many draws. Pylon! Alright. Well, that's not too bad. So he's gonna get himself, what, four cards off of this, I think? If he kills the Water Elemental, which he definitely will, I suspect. Now the question is, how do you handle... the Water Ellie? Like, do you just try to get the armor from the Armorsmith to you use your weapon? Or do you trade no, away the, the Grim? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Easy. Easy life. Mm -hmm. Now, does Archmage... Archmage still does solve the problem, right? Well, maybe not even. It might get, you know, three fireballs, but he won't get to cast the three of them. No. Okay. Well, there is and your a opponent's fireball. gonna run into it to gain armor, so... Mm -hmm. Well, I think Trump... Uh... Funny thing here is, like, what do you even ping? You ping the Grim Patron, I guess. Like, that's... Well, does it even matter because it would have died to another AoE? I think you armor played the one health Grim Patient, then you ping it. <laughs> Could you consider just pinging the armor smith though? I'll ping armor smith. Yeah, probably. If you if you're going for the win here, I think that's the only play you've got, and you hope your opponent is whiffed at every single. Yep. Exactly, just full on. Because you're just hoping to, hope top deck. you're just hoping to top deck the Antonis, right? Exactly. Yeah. And then get two arrows and win. But yeah, then at this point, three turns from here. 
Yeah, at this point, Dr. Boom wouldn't even be good. It would actually almost be a detriment, right? Oh. Whoa. Nope. Trump is going for the safest play I've ever seen. But I guess if he wants to win with the Archmage, that's the way to go. I just don't know if it'll be enough ever. Yeah. I don't think RDU thought that thoroughly. Because he didn't play the uh, No Mission Venture first, but I don't know. Who cares at this point? <laughs> Maybe he wants to just armor up into as much damage. Oh, okay, that that's fair as well. Like honestly, no plays are bad at this point. Mech warper. Oh man. Mech warper should say your mechs and spare parts cost one less. <laughs> wow. Would that and be that's... broken? Well, it might be, but you know what's even more broken? That yes. Clemento has just qualified to the uh, Kingwin Pro League semifinals. So that's going to be the entire eat. list, right? Like, we have every single playoffs player. We have Strife Crew, Firebat, and Show in Group 1 from Group Alliance, and Life Coach, Colento, and Hyped. Uh, that was a really close one. Trump got the uh, near reverse sweep on RDU, but couldn't quite finish him off with the Mech Mage. Yeah. A lot of players are saying that Grim Patron Warrior is actually the best deck in the metagame right now, and I can definitely see why. It probably wouldn't be that. Um, it, it definitely should have gotten at least one game, and we did see it get one game off the Mech Mage. So right now we're showing all the players that have qualified for the playoffs, and it's going to be, like you said, Strife Crow, Firebat Show from Group Alliance, and Colento, Hyped, and Life Coach for Group uh, Horde. Uh, now, of course, this will the finals will be on May 8th, so definitely I'm really excited for those finals. A very star-studded lineup of players. Yeah, those players are all players that have proven themselves over and over in tournament play, and even ladder play, if I have to be honest. And they're all just solid players all around, which is no surprise. I mean, the, the brackets were stacked. So for them to get to that point means they've actually done a lot of work and done a really good job of playing their games. Because the initial, you know, we have, each group has 10 players, and that's nine matches you have to play. And all the players in the league are amazing. So getting to the top is a really big feat in and of itself. Yeah, like you said, like all the players in this league, they pretty much all won tournaments. Yeah. Um, like, I mean, you have like Orange, who's won so many. Uh, Life Coach um, has won three recently. Colento, right. probably the most winning player of all of Hearthstone. Strive Crew, of course, wins so many tournaments as well. Firebat, the double Gfinity champion, and of course the world right. champion. And Sho, recently he won the Xfinity uh, Cup. So now the question is. Whether or not Colento is going to be able to take this one. Because I think Life, Co Life Coach got his first win over his... Uh, like, his first tournament win ever was over his team manager, Lothar. Or, his, like, his teammate, <laughs> Lothar. And now we'll have to see if he can actually, like, beat the, another competition in the KPL. So the next match we have... This is not over, by the way. Like, this was the fourth match of the day, I believe. Mm -hmm. And yes. we still have uh, Brian, Brian Kibler, Kibler from Brian Kibler Gaming. Founder and chairman of the Brian Kibler Foundation. Oh, versus yeah. Gara, best Sean. So this should be a quite exciting match. Hopefully we see more dragons coming from Kibler, although it didn't quite work out for him last time. Uh, I, I'd be excited to see more of that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think this is one of the most perfect times to introduce dragons as well. But kind of unfortunately, we haven't. Re uh, the fifth wing hasn't been released yeah. just yet. This close no, to getting yet. it for the finals, maybe. The playoffs are probably like the grand final. Hopefully, the same finals, quarterfinals will include some dragons. I would love to see some of that because um, those cards look like they're amazing to me. So on this note, guys, we'll be going for a 10 minutes break and we'll be back with Kibler versus Gara. Don't go anywhere.